Welcome back everybody. This video is going to be about making an equalizer for the amplifier that I made in the last video. Specifically, we're going to make a circuit to either amplify or attenuate both the high and low frequencies. So let's take a look at how these work. Now in general, there's two types of filters, active and passive ones. Passive filters always attenuate any frequency except for cases with LC filters that resonate, but that's not our case. And then there's active filters, which have the capability of actually amplifying some frequencies. For my project, I'm going to use two active filters, and I'm going to use two op amps, so one for the highs and one for the lows. As a small comment, I should point out that in hindsight I noticed I could have used a single op amp for both highs and lows. This means that I could have used probably a dual op amp for the whole project, but I guess that's not really a big deal. So here's the full schematic, and we can start looking at the filter controlling base. To understand how this circuit works, we can either try to come up with an intuitive explanation, or to actually find the transfer function using math, and plotting the amplitude of the output versus the input. For the intuitive explanation, I'll make an attempt at giving one. Basically, this is a inverting amplifier, and we know that the higher the impedance is between the output and the inverting input, the higher the gain is, and the opposite applies for the impedance between the input and the inverting input. For higher frequencies, the capacitor will basically be a short, and this means that the potentiometer really has no effect on the circuit, and the gain is therefore 1 because the other two resistors are the same. For lower frequencies instead, the capacitor does constitute an important impedance, and this means that the potentiometer has an effect on the gain. Therefore, the lower frequencies will either be amplified or attenuated based on the position of our potentiometer. This is therefore the base control. Now for a more rigorous explanation, we can actually calculate the transfer function. I'll show the math here, but I won't go through it because it's kind of long and I doubt many people want to see it. But anyway, this is a transfer function and we can plug this function into Python that will make a nice Bode plot for us. And we can in fact see that based on the value of the two resistors, which constitute the potentiometer position, we can change the gain of the base while leaving the treble unaffected. Now let's take a quick look at the treble control, and the same logic explanation basically applies to this. For higher frequencies, the capacitors are short, therefore the potentiometer has a lot of control on the gain. And for lower frequencies instead, the potentiometer has a relatively low impedance compared to the capacitors, and this means that it basically won't change the gain at all. Using Python once again, we can look at the transfer function, and we can actually confirm its behavior. Now for the second circuit, the schematic actually shows two extra resistors. This is because both of the inputs of the op amp actually draw a very small amount of current, and because there's nowhere for that current to come from because it's isolated by the two capacitors, if we don't bypass the capacitors with these resistors, the op amp's output could go completely high. Although these two resistors don't have a meaningful impact on the behavior of the filter. Before building the project, let's take a quick look at the circuit diagram and its completeness to see how it works. It's based on the previous video, so if you want a little bit more of an explanation on that, you can check that video out here. Although it has a few extra modifications aside from the equalizer. On the input, we have a little bit of pre-amplification, and this is important because if we use the filters on the very low amplitude signal, any small amount of noise will then be amplified later and will be heard a lot louder on the speakers. The fourth op amp is the gain control, so volume control. To this stage I included an emitter follower with an NPN transistor and this is because I noticed that with the circuit of the last video the problem was that the output of the op amp had a relatively high impedance which wasn't capable of properly driving the class AB amplifier at the end. This is essentially a low impedance output buffer that makes it so that the class AB output stage can be driven properly. Now that we got the theory out of the way, it's time to design our PCB. Here you can see the 3D view. I put four supply line capacitors because I noticed that on the breadboard it was giving a few distortion problems when I didn't have enough capacitance. And this might be a problem of my power supply or of using a breadboard. But just to be safe, I added the place so that I can choose later if to solder on all four capacitors or not. So now it's time to order the PCBs, and I'm going to order them from PCBuA.com. Not just because they're today's sponsor, but also because they've proven to be extremely reliable with all my orders. While I'm making the order, I also want to tell you that they got flexible PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing, and just about anything you might need for your DIY projects. So now let's upload our Gerber files, and an engineer is going to check them out, and let me tell you they're extremely fast. Here you can see it just took him like 3-4 to four minutes to approve my PCB design, and so it's time to place the order. 
So now a few days have gone by and the PCBs got here in the mail so it's time to check them out. As always they're looking great just as I was expecting them and the details are obviously looking very nice. So thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring the video. Check them out to get your own professional PCBs for DIY projects with the link in the description. Alright it's time to start soldering. Remember to solder SMD components first so that the through hole ones aren't in the way. For some reason the solder paste that I use kind of just melts and goes all over the place when I heat it up and I'm not exactly sure why. If you have any ideas you can post them in the comments. After fixing that with the soldering iron we can go to the through hole components. Now that those are done we can get to testing the circuit. First thing we do is connect power and when I turn it on with the potentiometer with the switch inside it we can see that the LED turns on so that looks good. Next we connect the audio jack and we can play some music to see if anything comes out of the speakers. Luckily everything seems to be working properly and so we can check out how the equalizer is working, see if it does what it should. The potentiometer on the left controls the treble and the one on the right is for the bass. Looking at the oscilloscope trace for the music while turning these potentiometers doesn't really show a meaningful difference, although listening to the music it's definitely noticeable. To get some kind of a visual feedback, I fed a square wave on the input that you can see here on the top, and on the trace below you can see the output. You can see that by changing the base potentiometer, the effect is to actually integrate the signal, so it superimposes a sort of a ramp signal on it, and it does the opposite if we turn it down. Instead with the treble control we can see that it either amplifies or attenuates the rising edge basically, so it's what we'd expect. I also tried feeding it a sine wave of different frequencies. This way we can also see that the treble and bass control do what they're supposed to. To give you guys a little bit of a feedback on how this sounds, I can play one of the songs that I use as background music on my videos. And this doesn't have a lot of treble, so the treble control really doesn't do too much that we can hear. But the bass control actually does create a meaningful difference. I want to make a few more remarks before finishing the video that might be important if you actually want to build something like this. The first one is that I forgot that the LM317 needs a little bit of a load on the output to regulate properly. And I forgot to do this in the schematic with the PCB. The way I fixed this was to use a potentiometer that has a 1 kilo ohm total resistance. This draws enough current from the output that it actually regulates properly. It would also appear that all the capacitors on the input weren't necessary. In fact I tried just putting one and it sounds great to me. And adding another didn't create a difference that I could hear personally. So probably I could have skipped those. I'm going to also upload the Gerbil files to PCBWay's website. So from there you can download them directly or also order the PCBs from them if you want. Although do keep in mind that the audio jack socket is the one that I'm using. So if you're using a different one the footprint probably won't work for you. Alright so that being said I think we can end the video here. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next video.